All right, uh, we got Miss Whitaker and Miss Hennebury here to talk about um, clearing fractions and decimals from your equations. So we're going to start with number nine on the two-step rational equations homework. Um, just to use as an example, and you've noticed a lot of fractions here. So Miss Hennebury, what do we want to do with these? I think that, remember we talked about you always want to have improper fractions. We don't work with mixed numbers anymore. So the um, first thing you want to do is change that mixed number to an improper fraction. Okay, so my first step actually would be to change then to improper. So I'm going to rewrite everything. And 12 and a half, it's going to be 2 times 12. 24 plus 1 is 25 over 2. All right, so I still have lots of fractions. Okay. What do I want to do now? Well, we want to get rid of the fractions. Okay. So when you have a problem with fractions, you look at all of the denominators, if you have more than one fraction, and you ask yourself, what is the least common denominator for those fractions? Okay, so we've got a 4, a 4, and a 2. The, the common denominator for those, the least common denominator, would be a 4, right? Yep, because they're all divisible into 4. Okay. That's how you know. All right, so then what do I do once I figure that out? Then you're going to multiply each side of the equation by 4. Okay. So it might help to put that in parentheses and put a 4. What does that look like? Distribution. Looks right? like distribution, yeah. right. All right, and you said both sides, right? Both sides always have to keep, keep that equality. Equal. Right. All right, so if I multiply a 4 by 1 fourth n, now I could put that over 1 if it confuses you. Um, so 4 o um, times one fourth n, what do I get? Right, you do numerators by numerators, so four times one is four. Okay. And one times four is four. And then you carry your n, there you go. Okay. Then you would do four times five. Okay, which is 20. 20. I'm gonna add that, right? Yep, and then four times one. There you go. Okay. And then I go to the other side. And then there you would do 25 times four. Okay, that's 100. Over two. Over two. Okay. All right, so I can simplify here. Yeah, you still have fractions, but now yeah. you can change them into whole numbers. Okay, so 4 divided by 4 is 1, which I don't need to put the 1. I'll just leave the n. Um, 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 100 divided by 2 is 50. And I bet they could take it from here, right? I think so. That's an easy one. All right, so I'm still trying to get rid of everything where the n is. So that's all I'm looking at. So I want to get rid of the plus 5, so the inverse operation is subtraction, both sides. That leaves me with n and 45. Does that look right? Looks right to me. Do you want to try one of those examples like you were showing me before on just taking those fractions out to the side? You want sure. to just do that over here? All right, so we're just talking about if we just have a set of random fractions. Okay, so we've got three, fra three fractions here. You still look at each denominator and you ask yourself, what is my common denominator of those numbers? So we know that 12 is a denominator for all of those because 12 is divisible by 3, by 4, and by 6. So you would multiply all of them by 12, right? So you are just multiplying numerators by numerators. So 12 times 1 is 12. 1 times 3 is 3. Then 12 times 3 is 36. 1 times 4 is 4, and then 12 times 5 is 60, and 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, so we still have fractions, but now you can just divide. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, 36 divided by 4 is 9, and 60 divided by 6 is 10. So all we're showing you here is that if you multiply everything by the same number, it just gets it to easy working numbers. So 4 plus 9 is 13 plus 10 is 23. So it's just showing you how you can change fractions into more workable numbers. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? Because sure. I'm thinking, just look at this. Maybe if I'm used to cross-canceling, mm -hmm. can I just do it that way? What do you mean? Instead of uh, multiplying the numerators. So take these right here. 1 third plus 3 fourths plus 5 sixths. And I'm multiplying them all by 12. It's all saying the same thing as 12 times 1 third, which if I 
just cancel, mm -hmm. I get four, yep. right? And then distributing again, 12 times 3 fourths, I cross cancel and I get 9, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then, I'll write that there. And then 12 times 5 six, um, I'll cross, cross cancel, and I get 10. Yep, that works because you still have your 4, your 9, and your 10. Right. So we just did them two different ways, so it works. Okay. So you can cross cancel or you can multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators to eventually get there. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's try another example. Okay, so we're trying to clear the fractions. We just want to get rid of the fractions. So we have to look for a common denominator, right? Mm -hmm. Of 5, 4, and 10. So that would be 20, right? 20, yep, because 20 is divisible by 10, 4, and 5. Okay, so we want to multiply this by 20 mm -hmm. and this by 20. So if I do 20 times, if I'm doing distrib distribution right there, I'm doing 20 times 2 fifths, so that's 40 fifths. And then 20 times 3 fourths x, which is 60 over 4 x equals 7 tenths times 20 is going to be 140 over 10. And then those all can become whole numbers, right? That's going to help me get rid of the, yep. the fractions. That's our so goal. 40 over 5 is 8. 60 divided by 4 is 15. Mm -hmm. X. And then 140 divided by 10 is 14. And then again, I think they can take it from there, trying to isolate that X to figure the X out. So all this is just clearing your fractions. Yep, because when you get down to that last step, you should know how to do that two-step equation. Right. All right, let's look at decimals. Okay, we want to get rid of these decimals. Just like we got rid of flat fractions, let's see if we can get rid of decimals. So how would I go about doing this? Well, you have to think about our decimals are different than fractions. Decimals are a base 10. So you know if you want to change those into whole numbers, your decimal place has to move. So you have to figure out, are you going to multiply it by 10, by 100, by 1,000? Because for every 10, it moves over to the right one time. Okay. So you look at the number that has the largest amount of decimal places and figure out how many times you have to move it, and then that's going to be the number that you multiply by. So number 11, it's this one right here, mm -hmm. because this only multiplied by 10, multiplied by 10, but this one's multiplied by 100, and we just have to make sure we do the same thing on both sides, right? Yep. All right. So we've decided... If this is the biggest one right here, we need to multiply them all by 100. And that should wash them all out? Yep, should. All right, so if I did it very similar to the way I did the fractions, I'm going to put parentheses around there and multiply by 100. Do the same thing over here. And so this is going to move this negative 2.3. It's going to move it twice, right? Mm -hmm. So that becomes a negative 230 minus, it's going to move this over twice, so it's going to be 420R is equal to, and this just moves twice, that's the whole purpose of doing that, so that's going to be a negative 3758. And then at that point, right, we're just solving two-step equation, it just has bigger numbers. Just bigger numbers, but probably easier, still easier to do than a bunch of decimals, right? Oh yeah. All right, so at this point, we want to um, get rid of our negative 230. Add 230 to both sides, and then you'll divide by the negative 420 once you get that answer to solve for your R. All right, one more example? One more, yeah, last one. Okay. Um, so this one's um, probably a little simpler. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you notice off the bat? That all the decimals are the same. Okay, so what do I need to do here? Um, I would say 10, because they each have one decimal place. Okay, so that will wash them out, right? Yep. All right, so we multiply that by 10, multiply that by 10. Make sure you're doing the same thing on both sides to keep it equal. So that moves it one to the right, that becomes 65. This moves one to the right, this moves one to the right, so I have 24M minus 49.
and then they can solve it from there. Yeah, that's an easy one too. All right, so um, just a couple of tips to help clear fractions and decimals. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Just remember, show your work. It's real important. Yeah. All right, good deal.